following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 16th, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure that you and I have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go look at the circumstances of the markets, what the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I. Most importantly, though, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And even better, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in 877-927-6648. Internationally, 727-445-1044. Let's get this party started because it is Wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is the Hotel California, sponsored by none other than Tiger Finance News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow trading up 15 points. She's trading at 17,539. Gold's up 15 bucks. It's outpacing the Dow today. Gold's up uh, trading at 1076. S&P's up six. Composite up eight points. Russell is up four and a half points. Russell is the strongest of the indices out here. The DAX closed up 18 bucks. The uh, FTSE closed up 43. Silver's up 47 cents. Uh, Solar City is the uh, leader uh, to the upside, up about 11 bucks, 26 percent. Tesla's up eight bucks. Heartland Payments up about 10 percent. Um, Google's up uh, six dollars. Shire PLC up seven. To the downside, Global Payments off eleven and a half percent, down eight bucks and change. Pioneer Natural Resources down seven bucks, nearly five percent. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals off a little over a percent, down six dollars. Priceline off six thirty three, about a half a percent. Dead air is what somebody says out there. How could there be dead air? Huh, I'll just uh, send off a message. Probably not a Tiger TV, but let me just uh, send off a uh, quick message. Uh, in the den, there we go. So hopefully our guys uh, in the uh, in the studio will get it, and uh, that's great. Okay, thank you, Tommy. Um, so let's uh, let's begin the. Uh, so where do we want to be? Well, I know where we want to begin today. Obviously, it's a big party day because the Fed's going to be coming out telling us that they're likely raising rates. Right. So since two thousand and two. And you and I took a look at a chart yesterday. I'm not going to bring that same chart out here. But let me give you the data on this. Well, let me ask you this question. I'll ask you this question here. And that is, um, hmm, I don't know. Do, 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 do. Wow. Uh, okay, so uh, in any event, I'm just going to keep going on here. And uh, I know everybody in the sound text, they'll work things out. But, uh, some problems, apparently, when there are and there aren't, uh, whether there's sound in there. But um there we go. Mike's on. So now we should be in pretty good shape. Hopefully there's thumbs up uh, all over the place. Okay. So uh, here's the question that I uh, posed to you. So we're really just getting things kicked off. And so we've got rate, a likely rate hike that's going to take today. Um, we're certainly not going to see a rate decrease. So we pretty much have that uh, down. Um, in the, uh, since 2002, I think it's 2002, rate hikes and rate increases, we've seen 28 of them. So we've seen 28. My question to you would be, now let's do this. Let's take a look at when the Fed actually increases rates, okay? In that time period, we've seen 17 Fed rate increase. Now, I'm just going back to 2002. What percentage of the time do you think that the market responds negatively? Because at this stage here, the amount of hype that's been out there in the marketplace and everything else, you would think that that percentage would be like, what about it, 100%, 99%? I mean, that is an essence. Isn't that an essence what the uh, what everybody is trying to, not everybody, because not me, is trying. The, the statistics are this. It's nearly a coin toss. 
It's actually 54% of the time. So, if the, which is which is pretty close to a coin toss, right? You know, if you did 50 coin tosses, you probably aren't going to end up exactly at 50-50. You're going to be probably around 54. So, of this, of the actually the uh, rate increases, I'm sorry, 58 percent of the time, a little bit better than a coin toss. So, of the 17 rate increases out there, 10 of them have had some type of uh, negative results out there. On average, quite frankly, between rate increases and decreases. The actual movement during the day, it's not going to be, it's, it's typically not the type of party that you think it is. It's less than a half a percent movement out there. Now, we have seen the, ne the biggest negative response that we had was back in December of 2008. December of 2008, right? Uh, well before the uh, bottom, not well before, but a quarter before the bottom in March of 2009. And that had a 4% uh, move. The actual highest uh, increase that we've seen, highest response has been a little over almost 3% out there. That took place in December of 2007. So that was the first rate um, decrease, I believe. That, that was a second rate decrease. There was one before the October high, and then there was one right after. The one right after, it had a nice 2.7% uh, lift to the market. Now, we're not dealing with that, but, you know, for those folks that believe that it's almost like 100% of the time on a rate decrease with regard to how the market responds, and when I talk about the market response, I'm referring to that day's open versus that day's close inside the S&P 500. And I'd pose the same question out here as well, which is when the Fed has reduced rates, what do you think the market response is? You'd almost, would you, I mean, based on the coverage and everything, wouldn't you think it's maybe like 100%? No, it's not 100%. When the Fed has decreased rates out there, it's been that coin toss 54% 54, 54 of the time. So basically, I believe we are in a coin toss situation with regard to which way is, the, you know, there is no definitive information out here. If we go back, take a look at history with regard to the way that the market responds. Yet look at all of the hype. You know, the same type of thing. I got a I got an email a couple days ago from someone. I pretty much disregarded. I, I get a call. There's, there's some haters out there. I just think they have nothing. They listen to the show all the time, so that's a cool thing. And one of those uh, so-called haters said, I didn't know diddly, and it went on beyond that, so I'm just paraphrasing here. I didn't know diddly with regard to the correlation between oil and the uh, stock market out there. Now, you and I know that uh, we've taken a look at charts out there. I think... Uh, we might, I might have taken a look at a chart like that with Tom on his show on Friday afternoon, last Friday. But you and I, we've taken a look at that. Here's the, here's the statistics. Because, how you know, if you watch the media, the boob tube, that's what my mom used to call it, the boob tube out there. I mean, that's really what it is. There are a lot of boobs that are out there. And, and I'm not referring to breasts. I'm referring to just simply upstairs out here. You would believe, they would have you believe, you would actually, you might, you might even buy into it, that if the price of oil goes down, so does the market. Now, you can go back to 2002. That's the data that I had. If you go back to 2002, the correlation between the same day, a rise in price in oil and a rise in price in the S&P 500, what percentage do you think that is, that that happens? You'll be surprised. You think it's more like, you think it's, it's not 50-50. It's not 60-40. It's more like 70-30. The price of oil goes up. Guess how often the S&P is going up at the same time? It's not the 70. It's the 30 percent. Oh, you might say, well, does that mean that then uh, if oil is going down, that the market is going down? No. The same correlation. In fact, it's actually worse than that. When, uh, and this is going back to 2002, when the price of oil goes down, this is out of 3,511 samples. So this is through yesterday, as a matter of fact. There's only 898 days when oil goes down, the market goes down with it. That's 25 percent of the time. You're actually better off being on the other side of the trade. Now, you might say, hey, that, that's from 2002. Go take a look at a shorter period of time. How about the top? Let's just go take a look at the most recent top since June 9th of 2014. That's when oil made its peak out there. It's 386 trading sessions ago. 386. In the days when oil went higher out there, the market went higher 25% of the time. A little bit even worse right? Even worse. How about, oh, you might say, oh, well, how about the other way around? In those 386 days out there, when oil went down, there were only 128 of those days when the market also went down. That's 33% of the time. 
So, folks, you know, do not buy. I, I think it's just that the that the boob tube that those folks out there they just look they regurgitate stuff. They don't do their work. They don't take a look at it. I don't know where they get this information from, though. And the statistics just don't back it up. Okay, so we've got all that information out of the way. What does that mean? Let's summarize it. Number one. Whichever way the price of oil is going, and right now it's back a buck fifty-three. You've got about if you wanted to take that trade. Look, I just gave you some statistic you probably can use in Nadex. You could just do the opposite out there, and you're going to end up with a seventy percent probability in your direction. And, uh, but anyway, look, here's the deal: disregard oil, trade oil as oil, trade the market as the market out there, and you will be better off. In fact, it's the same way with regard to the Fed decision out here. We need to trade the patterns that are inside the market. That is at least the conclusion that I have drawn. So let's go take a look at the different patterns in the markets. Let's go take a look at both the bullish and the uh, bearish case out here. Let's take a look at each side of the trade. Let's first start off with uh, with uh, gold, though, because we've seen, in essence, you know, a fairly decent move inside Goldilocks. So let's take a look at it straight out at 1077. Uh, that's up uh, 15 bucks. Let's go ahead and add our profiles out here. What we're going to see is that uh, what gold has been doing, it's been bouncing around the weekly market profile low. Now, that price, by the way, uh, there we go. Let me see here. Let me get that uh, data out here on the screen. Oh, what the heck did I do there? Oh, that's interesting. I must have deleted something. So now I need to go. Give me a moment here. I need to put those market profiles back up on my screen. Son of a gun. How did I do that? That was uh, that was pretty uh, well. Like I'm not gonna. Uh, let me see, I'm just trying to see if I could do this really quickly here. I hate to do that. You are asked. There we go. Okay, so this should uh, go ahead and put it up on the screen here rather quickly. So what we do know is that uh, light sweet crude is trading really right around. I'm just gonna we're gonna look at the daily and the weekly market profiles. It's found support at the uh, bottom of the uh, weekly, which has been uh, priced out of 1060.10. You're 10.77. You know, it looks like now gold will have broken out really to the upside if it can get above 11, 17, 60. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen today. I don't know what's going to happen today. What I do believe is if you're on the long side of gold, I believe that that is the correct side to be on. I'm neutral at the moment. Want to just see a bit more information. We were long. We've taken our profits on those uh, trades out here. Um, and the reason why I believe that you're on the right side of the trade is just simply if I take a look at the uh, COT data uh, that the CFTC produces each Friday for us. It says that the uh, commercial traders are basically nearly net long. Uh, they are anticipating that this could be a major bottom out here. Um, and if we uh, see, so what's likely to happen today, at least, is a punch up in the 10 91 uh, in that 1091 area. That's both the uh, weekly low of the uh, box as well as the uh, point of control. So I would anticipate that that is uh, the likely move out there. And if we take a look at some of the mining equities, let's go see how they're behaving today. Let's take a look at uh, Agnico Eagle, AEM out here. And well, uh, I've got to put the volume back on my screen. So I'll do that when we get back. We'll see that just like gold was holding the bottom of its weekly profile, so too in the case of Ignico Eagle when it tested it yesterday. you got to like these market profiles. I think AEM also tested the uh, November 17th swing point. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. 
See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. So uh, Dow's up 32, S&P is up 7. Just to finish off, uh, gold and silver. Seems to me, if you are long on the uh, on that side of the trade, that seems to me to be the uh, correct side of the trade. Uh, the nice thing is today, prior to the Fed releasing uh, and uh, Janet Yellen uh, coming out and uh, communicating to us what it is that they're going to do with regard to rates and for how long and so on and so forth, you've got a nice little cushion on those trades out there. What you don't want to see those trades do is really, uh, close below yesterday's lows out there. That would then suggest to me that prices could, even though the, the commercials take a long, they're big cruise liners. They take a while. They're not dependent on timing the market like you or I might be out there. Uh, they're looking at a little bit longer haul. Okay, so that's with regard to the mining equities. Uh, I mentioned light sweet crude earlier and the lack of correlation between when it goes down and the price of the market going down and when it goes up, the price of the market going up. So we're just simply, that's it. We're going to end the conversation on that. It's a correlation that ain't worth diddly squat out there. If we take a look at light sweet crude, you know, we had that nice little uh, bullish uh, reversal pattern, that seventh wave. Uh, but the price now is back 
below its TAS market profile. You want to see light sweet crude? If you're on the long side of this trade, you would like to see it close back above 3602. If we take a look at just a short term chart on light sweet crude, let's take a look at the retracement. There is an A to B equals CD to the downside that I did see. Let me get rid of the market profiles. We'll be able to see that together. Well, I thought we would. I just have to actually go ahead and add that to a while. I must have deleted everything all in one swoop and don't even know how I did that. that was, that's too bad. I'd like to know how I did that. But if we take a look at the A to B equals CD to the downside, let's go, go see if there's any kind of girtly. I'm using the high out here from uh, 1230 uh, yesterday. December the 15th. That's my A point. My B point out here is down here at 4.30 in, uh, in the morning earlier. She 4.30 and 5. A little bit of a retracement. It was a shallow retracement, about 38% uh, percent retracement back here into 8 o'clock this morning. You can see we're at the 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD to the uh, downside. No bullish reversal signals. It actually would suggest that we could be looking at a little bit lower price. But let's look at retracements now. Let's go from the low. Let me make sure I have the right tool out here. Uh, yeah, let's look at the retracement from the low here of December, yeah, December 14th up to the high out here. And uh, we are at the 0.618 retracement level. It's just that we came down there with a wide-ranging bar and volume, and that's not really a, a good setup here. Um, if we can see, if it can, if it can stage some kind of significant reversal with some volume, then that would be your Gartley buy pattern. Uh, that would be in place out here. Otherwise, uh, 3525 is the uh, likely uh, spot for light sweet crude to cruise back to. That was taken a look at a 30-minute uh, chart for that pattern. Okay, so um, let's now go move over. We've taken care of commodities. Let's go over and take a look at the markets. Let's understand where it is that we're at. Let's get a little bit of the uh, bigger picture out here. And the bigger picture, let's do that by taking a look at the daily equity futures contracts. Let's look at the NQ and see what it has done. So off of the bottom, so from high to low, meaning from December the 2nd down to the low here on December 14th, here's what we know. Number one, inside of the uh, NQ, we can see that it's made a 0.618 retracement. Really exact, or really close to exact. 46.35, 46.34 is the number. The high today, 46.34. So it's made a, a nice 0.618 retracement out there. That's what it's done on the daily. If we take a look at uh, where it's traveling between profiles, hasn't hit resistance, which is up at 45.47. So that's probably its next move. If we take a look at the ES Mini out here, uh, it too has between its high, which is from the December 2nd, down to the low of Monday. It's also made a 0.618 retracement. So we're going to pay attention, you know, to where it's at. That's often times the place where uh, where you will let where the market will let people off of an elevator. These are floors, 0 0.382, 0 0.618 out there. Because we're using this because you and I are going to go down and take a look at the um, at the intraday charts. So we're just getting a perspective inside the uh, Dow, and the Dow is actually pretty strong. Buyers are in control of the Dow as you and I speak right now. They actually gained control of that yesterday when they moved that oscillator above the uh, zero line. Inside the Dow Futures, we can see that it has made nearly a 0.786 retracement, which is 17.659. And, it, you know, it's absolutely in the hands of the buyers. So we can see the retracements when we get back from this break. We're going to first go out to Lou and Nashua. We're going to take a look at uh, dust. And then we'll go back and take a look at the intraday charts for the futures contracts. And we'll understand both the bullish and the bearish case. We'll be right back to this. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile trader's market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesamento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 35 points right now. We're uh, going out to Nashua to speak with Lulu. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this afternoon? Very good. And you, Steve? I'm very good. Thanks so much for uh, asking. And uh, on my screen, it says you're taking a look at uh, dust, which is yeah. the uh, bear position on the mining sector. So tell me uh, what you're doing and how I can help you. Well, this morning I picked it up at uh, 1610. And... Um, I guess I have to wait for 2 o'clock. But I'm just wondering if uh, if the rate hike is already priced in. So, well, I, I don't know. So, so, um, so if I if I understand your question, you are anticipating that uh, that the U.S. dollar index is going to impact. So you say a rate hike. Take take me another step. Uh, get, help me understand your thinking here and why you're looking at the bearish side of the miners. Well, I'm just um, thinking that uh, the miners are going to go lower. Okay, so and, let's let's take a, let's take a look at that. So uh, uh, if they go if they do go lower, um, then in 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 order to take a look at the miners overall, what I would do first is just take a look at because you, in essence, your 
uh, trade right here is based on the entire basket of miners. So I'm just simply going to use the GDX as that same basket, the one to one. Uh, that is the uh, that is the uh, uh, market vectors gold miners ETF. And here's what it did yesterday. So if we want to take a look at just simply swing point analysis and volume and testing swings out there, uh, what it did, Lou, yesterday was November 18th is the most recent swing point, and that swing point had 69 million shares, and the high of of that was thirteen dollars and fifty eight cents and what the GDX did yesterday was it tested that high with thirty seven million so thirty seven million were going against sixty nine million and even though the day before was eighty eight million it was pushing down with volume <clears throat> yesterday was an actual test and a rejection of that area so it's almost to me if you were to take a look at those two days you have a little bit of a coin toss in order for you to be correct on your trade and you may be. I'm not saying that you're not. Um, you will need to see the GDX, as an example, get back into that November 18th level, below 1358. And you like to see it pushing with more than 69 million shares. If it does that, then the GDX is likely going to go test the September 11th area. And that would be right around 1321. What does that mean for you inside of the uh, dust? That would mean September 11th would, in essence, uh, kind of, well, it, it really wouldn't be a target because of the way that the 300% uh, trades. What you need to see today in order to be correct on the trade, today, tomorrow, Friday, you need to see it close above. This is dust now. You need to see it close above 1841. You're at 1643. If it does that, then what price is likely to do, Lou, is head up into the 20 uh, ish area between 20 to 23. But here's what uh, here's the here's the space oddity with regard to uh, that uh, specific trade. And, and it sounds to me like you're on you're maybe in your car on a cell phone and you can't see this. But what I'm going to put up on my screen right now, this is what I this is the chart here that tracks what the commercial traders with regard to gold futures, what they are doing. And I like to take a look at it as a percentage of open interest. And that means that what I need to do when I take a look at this chart is always evaluate their their positions based on a percentage of that open interest historically. And what gold did two weeks ago was it got down to. Uh, and this is so. Then they're always net short uh, because of producers selling forward their uh, futures contracts. Uh, so there, it's always a matter of taking a look at their net short position. And two weeks ago, they were at the least net short position that they had been in since 2001. Now, other times when they've been down to these levels, which was back in June of 2013, gold formed a bottom. Its most recent time down here was back in August of 2015, and it had formed a bottom. Here's what gold actually did back on the trading, the trading week uh, when uh, they got down to that less net short position. This was the week of December or the weekend of December 5th. Is what gold did on a weekly basis was it created a bullish key reversal candle. And that says that that bot, so that coinciding with uh, gold uh, commercial traders getting down to this very less net short, almost net long position inside gold says they're really anticipating that it's going to move higher. So it's almost as if it doesn't really matter what happens to the U.S. dollar index. Now, the last time that we saw any kind of a outside key reversal, in this case here, bearish uh, candle was back up at the highs in March of 2014. So I will say that it is you going against those big old commercial liners out there. They are anticipating that gold, and then hence I would say the gold miners, are actually going to go in the northerly direction out there. So just keep your stop in place. I don't know who's right out out here all i can do is just share with you what uh, at least those guys are doing so that you can consider which side of the trade you maybe should be on great that's great information i'll just tighten up my stop yeah okay so yeah. do that and uh, best of luck on that trade great thank you you bet. That was Lou in uh, Nashua. Now, you know, inside those commercial traders, they take a long time to build those positions. But, boy, I, I got to tell you, it just seems like, um, you know, and maybe the U.S. dollar index, the, the correlation, we took a look earlier at oil. We've taken a look at, you know, other correlations inside the markets. Uh, my best advice was stay inside the uh, stay inside the patterns, inside the charts that you're looking at. And I think you will uh, do uh, you'll do well there. Um, speaking of staying inside the patterns, let's now go back over and take a look at the intraday type chart. So we know that the uh, Dow, now I mentioned the Dow is really in the hands of the uh, buyers. That's really just taking a look at where we're at. We take a look at the advanced decline oscillator inside the uh, 
Inside the Dow, you can see we're above zero. We got above zero yesterday. We're very close to a golden cross inside of the Dow. Remember, the uh, bear cross, the uh, the uh, death cross out there is, is really not the sign of death. It's actually the sign that the market's getting ready to form some type of bottom. It's usually late in the game out here. Uh, I can tell you that uh, with... Um, with 100% certainty because I've done all the studies. I have a little tool. Maybe I'll be able to pull it up during one of the breaks or tomorrow or something or Friday. You know, we'll run the tool. I'll show you because you can actually do it yourself. You know, it's just a program that I have built um, that takes a look at uh, anything I want to and uh, any instrument I want to and says, hey, when the 50-day uh, simple moving average crosses below the 200-day, go ahead and take a long trade and don't take, uh, don't get out, I'm sorry, take a short trade and then don't get out of that short trade until you get the golden cross out there and then see what the uh, results are. And what I can tell you is that it's the golden cross that usually is the one that lays the golden egg. It is not the death cross, typically out there. And we can take a look at specific percentages. But at this stage here, uh, you've got the 50 day simple moving average at 17,543 and the uh, 200 is 17. 553. So you got about 10 points worth of movement out there, very close to a uh, golden uh, cross, which. Uh and, and then with regard to the Dow, you know, I'll give you the exact uh, specifics. I'll see if I can do it during the uh, breakout here. But as we take a look at the daily chart, you had the golden cross inside the NASDAQ. That's bullish. Uh, the bulls are, uh, the buyers are are the ones in control of the uh, Dow out here. And uh, the only thing the VIX index needs to do, it tested the 1888 level today, this morning. So far, that is held as support. Uh, 1891 is now the number. If you see the VIX get below 1891 at the end of the day and you're short the market, I can tell you it is the absolute wrong side of the trade to be on out there. If, on the other hand, uh, the uh, VIX index holds uh, 1891 in your short, then uh, you may be okay out there. Uh, and that's how I would take a look at that. Let's look at the uh, short-term charts out here. Let's go take a look at the 30-minute uh, charts. The interesting thing on the 30-minute chart, I would think the Russell 2000 would be the one throwing a hissy fit today. Because if interest rates are going up and you are a small business uh, owner out there, um, pretty good chance that uh, your loans are uh, interest rates are going to go up, and typically, and, and in this case here, the uh, Russell 2000 hasn't uh, really, you know, sold off that much during the uh, during the day. There is a small A to B equals CD to the downside pattern that we could draw out here. So let's say that the uh, Russell 2000 futures contract that it responds uh, negatively at first to the uh, to the announcement of the uh, Fed. What that will look like with regard to A to B equals CD patterns, going to get it up on my screen here, your A point inside of the uh, Russell on the 30-minute basis out here is up here at the high that took place at the open this morning at uh, 930. That's your A point. Your B point was down here at about uh, 11, between 11 and 1130. And then from uh, 1230 to 1 as I was coming up the uh, on, on the air, um, we saw the uh, potential C point form. That says that we're likely to see a move down to... I don't know, 1123 to 1122 to 1125 out there. Um, if, in fact, the Russell 2000, that's the move that it makes, uh, then it's on its way to form in a huge A to B equals CD to the upside. And I do mean huge. Look, maybe it even is more negative than that. And you see the Russell 2000 futures contract get down to 1115. That would be just a normal retracement, a normal pattern inside of the uh, Russell. That, too, could be a buy. I would say, as I look at candles, that would seem like the more likely outcome because that is where the Russell 2000 on the 30-minute basis really had a nice little sign of strength, nice little wide-ranging bar. This was at, uh, at the open on uh, yesterday, December the uh, 15th out there. That's what's going on inside the 30-minute chart there. If we look at the 30-minute, uh, why did the market move higher today and sell off? If you were a newsletter subscriber, you would have been prepared for that. You know that we are long. You know that we went long on Monday when we got the signal. And we knew this morning that price was moving higher and doing it with less what? Less relative strength. And so I even suggested if you were a conservative trader, take your 6.5% profit off the table. You know, in two days, that's pretty good day's work out there. And then, of course, I said, if you know, in essence, if you're not a conservative trader, just stay with the trade and anticipate that the market's going to pull back. Why? Because it had really one of our favorite patterns out there. 
right? Price was moving higher, doing it with less strength out there. And really all we've seen is a kind of a, a small little retracement. Does that mean that that's all that we're going to get? No. In fact, we know that it's just a little bit more than a coin flip, just a little bit more than a coin flip, that the market would respond negatively to whether it is good or bad news that the Fed is going to provide to us. So if we take a look at retracements right now from low to high, and this is the low from Monday to the high of uh, earlier this morning, um, it would not be unthinkable to see the ES Mini get down to 2025. Folks, we are at 2042 right now. I promise you, you know, the bears will be dancing in the street out there if there's a 20-point move to the downside. You'll hear that it's all over out there. Folks, that would be the shallowest retracement that one would anticipate after this nice move off of the bottom here. Look, I will tell you that Santa is still in the building. In fact, he's right here. In fact, he's speaking to you right now. So even if the so the idea is to take a look at where is the place to buy this market. That's really what you and I should be looking at here. Now, granted, I said we took a look at the daily charts. They made a 0.618 retracement. So it could be a huge A to B equals CD to the downside. I, I, I give you that, okay? But I think what you want to be doing is you want to be watching the levels such as 2009, 2025 out there. Those become your natural buy areas to form those girtly buy patterns. Now, why would Stevie say you should be looking to the long side of the market out here? Well, number one, you know that I was at the uh, Santa convention, got back uh, from the North Pole, you know, late uh, on uh, Monday morning, just in time to do the show out there. So I've got the, you know, I was at the meeting. I know what it is in Santa. There was, they, they, the coal production line, just like the coal mines around the country, shut down. There's no way that, that there's going to be coal that's going to be delivered to you. And I would say on the bigger note, it's this. And the bigger note is we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, your friend and mine. What the New York Stock Exchange did on Monday was formed a Gartley buy pattern. So that index, which really gets the, uh, you know, what kicked out of it from time to time. And let's face it, since the uh, May time frame, it has gotten the snot kicked out of it. It is in a downtrend. There is no question about it. But guess what? It formed a Gartley buy pattern. And yesterday was a beautiful confirmation. A nice little gap up, created that Three River Morningstar pattern. Uh, so far, all it's done, it's made a 0 .382 retracement. You know, it's bounced. If that uh, low of Monday gets taken out, well, then I got to uh, send a quick memo to a Santa and say, hey, what's up? And then, of course, I'll get back to you tomorrow on that. But uh, you've got a nice and Confirmed bullish pattern inside the New York Stock Exchange. You've got a golden cross inside the NASDAQ 100, inside the NASDAQ composite. You've got uh, the bulls in control of the uh, Dow out here. Um, you know, what else does the market need in order to be uh, bullish out here? Well, that 1881 or 1891, whatever it was, the number I gave you inside the VIX index, that's going to be a key to be watching today. No question about that in my mind. If we take a look at the NQ, let's go see what the NQ is doing on its 30-minute uh, chart out here. And the NQ was really doing the same thing that the ES was. Well, I take, yeah, it was moving slightly higher, doing it with less relative weakness. Right now, price has come down and has tested its current uh, TAS market profiles out there in the 4599 level. You're at 46. Uh, 4606 right now. Not really much of a retracement. Hey, the uh, Qs, the NQ out here, I said the Qs, but the NQ, you know where its retracement would be? Just to get to the dead cat bounce, 4572. There'd be nothing wrong with it with it doing that at all. Steve Rhodes, Santa Claus with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EverBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six-month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one. It's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options or speak with one of their banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Yeah, folks, uh, Dow's up 61, S&P is up uh, 10, and uh, stay tuned here because at uh, 2 p.m., our man, uh, Tom O'Brien, he's going to come on the air live with you and do an update uh, with the uh, Fed release out there. So uh, I'll have taken care of the bullish side of the uh, trade, and uh, we'll let Tom take care of the uh, bearish side of the trade. I think that's the best way to uh, do that. Um, I've got an email here from uh, Carl, and uh, Carl wants to buy the UNG. His question is... Uh, how much more damage do you expect to see with the uh, UNG? would like to speculate and buy it for the long term. And long term is a uh, key, uh, is what I'll key in on with regard to that email question. Now, if we were to take a look at from a trade standpoint, take a look at natural gas out here, you'd see it's trading at a buck seventy eight. 
uh, lowest level that I have on my charts going back to, I think, 2001, 2002 out there. Uh, no type of uh, pattern or bullish setup or anything that I can see here. But what Carl said, which is key, is long term. So, Carl, I'm going to give you the trade on that because I have no idea when uh, natural gas is going to find a bottom out here. But here's what you can do. Because the gift that has been given to you, in my opinion, is the mere fact that you've got UNG trading at $6.98. And you said long term. So here's what you do. You take 1% of your working capital, whatever that is. If you've got 10 grand, that's 100 bucks. If you've got 100,000, that would be $1,000. Take whatever that is. 100%, let's use 100 bucks out here. Or for every for every $10,000 in working capital that you have, that's going to be your entire risk. You're going to make this a you're going to make this like a unexpired option trade. So you would take that $100 risk, right? That's 1% of $10,000, you would divide it by seven, and that is how many shares you would buy. That is about 14 shares. That's how you, that's the only way that I can come up with from the long term to suggest how you would trade UNG at this stage out here. Hey, if you want to, if you want to splurge and do 2% uh, uh, risk, uh, go ahead and, and double it up. And that way, if it goes to zero, you know, that's all that you're out. It's not going to zero. Well, I don't know what it's going to, but uh, there is certainly no reversal that I can find. And that would be the best way to handle the, uh, uh, UNG in my opinion. Folks, uh, have a, a terrific day. I'll be back with you on uh, Terrific Thursday. Stay tuned. Tom O'Brien will be up in about uh, two minutes. Take care, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.